Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So today we're going to do some more load testing and surge testing on the 12,000 XP by EG4. I've had this inverter running the workshop here for the last couple weeks and I was out here the other day we ran the, the planer and a vacuum at the same time with all of the lights and the mini split, no issues. We ran my new three horsepower table saw with the vacuum with everything else running in the workshop no issues whatsoever. I haven't had any problems with it so far, but today we're gonna to see if we can push it to the limits and see if we what it takes to actually get this thing to air out. So in case you guys didn't see my previous video where we did a full installation on this, this is a 12,000 watt continuous output off-grid inverter, but it does work with the grid. If we do overload it, it'll switch to the grid, it'll let it take over, but it tries to maximize the use of solar. So if you guys are interested in the 12,000 XP, uh, right now I think this is running about $2,500, and I've got a coupon code that can get you an extra $100 off. It is CVS100, and it's it only gonna work for the month of April. So right now the 12,000 XP, it is fully hooked up. I've got about 3,800 watts of solar going into it and we've got 480 hours worth of batteries attached and the batteries are sitting at I think 90 percent and we don't have much solar coming in only about 600 watts of solar so we're going to be doing most of this test with just mostly the battery powering it. So out here in the workshop my lights even though they're LED they do pull a lot of power so if I pan up here with my phone you can see these high bay LED lights and these draw about 250 watts a piece. And then I've got another set on the other side. So when I'm running both sets of lights, I almost pull 2000 watts of power just with the lighting. So I've also got a mini split over here running, a three ton mini split. And then I've got a ceiling fan and then a couple lights here uh, helping to light me up. So that's kind of the base, 2200's the constant load on this system. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna turn on some 240 volt heaters and 240 volts does use both legs, so it's a balanced load on the inverter. All right, we're up to 7,000 watts of power. Go ahead and turn this other heater on. All right, there's the computer screen right there. We're pulling 5928 and 5780, so we're a max of 6,000 per leg. We're almost to the max on one leg. So I think a lot of people get confused with amperage uh, because on this system, uh, 6,000 watts per leg ought to be, I believe, 50 amps on the AC side, but on the DC side, since it's a lower voltage, way higher amps. So we're gonna take a DC reading of the battery cables. We are pulling 230 amps from the battery, 230. That's why you have to have such a big battery bank for this, because it's gonna use it. So you can see 233 amps coming off of the 48 volt battery. Go to AC, this is L2, 46.8 amps, and L1 should be a little higher, 49.4 amps. See, we are right up against that maximum of 50 amps that it'll do continuous. All right, so L2 is a little bit lower, and this heat gun right here is on L2. I'm just gonna kick the fan on See if I can up that just a hair. See if I can balance it a little bit better. All right, we're still 11,714 watts. We're not quite maxed. I'm gonna turn it on low. I'm just gonna bring this up to try to get right at 12,000 watts. Okay, I put that on four. You can dial in the heat on these. Oh, we just clicked. Just over, we must have just went over 12,000 watts because it clicked. Um, everything's still running and it switched to grid. That's exactly the way it's supposed to work. You never know what happens unless you hear the click. So when we look at the graphic, you can see now it is coming in from the grid and we're over 12,000 watts. So we're gonna have to bring it back down for it to switch back. So the light on the front of the inverter, it's green now, so it switched back to batteries. It takes about three minutes of being below 12,000 watts for it to actually switch. 
and uh, my heaters have cooled back down. But I'm gonna go ahead and kick them back on. I think I can get us closer to 12,000 this time. All right, we're over 5,800 watts on both legs, almost 11,700 watts. 47.7 amps on L2, 49.3 on L1. So we are about as maxed as we're gonna get it without making it switch to the grid. I'm gonna let it sit here for a while to see how long it runs. Oh, one of my heaters just kicked down. It got hot enough in here, my heater kicked down. So it ran the 12,000 XP for about six minutes at 11,600 watts, just under the maximum output. It ran just fine, didn't switch to the grid, and it would have run longer if one, of the, if one of the heaters kicked off because it got too warm in here. So I think it would have just kept on running just fine. I think that proves it does have pretty much a continuous output of 12,000 watts. So let's go ahead. I'm going to start kicking on some, some tools and stuff in here. I want to see what the surge capacity of, the, of this is and see how high we can push it till it trips. So for the surge testing of the inverter, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off its grid connection. So this is a 100 amp breaker. We're gonna turn that off, and then it's solely on the inverter to be able to start these loads, and we'll see how it does. All right, I got my multimeter set on max amps to hopefully catch the surge. We've got, I think, 2100 watts. Yeah, just around 2,100 watts of load already with the lights and the mini split and everything. We'll see if it can start this three horsepower table saw. And it did just fine. So you see we got 78 amps of surge and we are still green. So when we over surge this system, since it doesn't have grid, it's just gonna trip out. So all the lights will go out. It'll be pretty apparent when we overload this. All right, I kicked the heat guns on high. We're at 5,100 watts. We're not quite to 50% yet, but we'll see if it'll start. Still started. All right, kick this heater on here. We got 6,712 watts. We'll try it again. You can read that, 93.3 amps, still did fine. Kick the heat guns back on, full blast. 9,700 watts. Ooh. 96.1 amps. I don't know if I can push the surge capacity of this any harder with the table saw. We already with the 9770 or whatever, we were already over 80% of the output on this and it still started the three horsepower table saw. I think that is, that is good. And there is no grid backup right now. The only way I can test this any harder is I have a five horsepower air compressors. Now, air compressors are extremely hard to start. They have a high surge, plus this one is five horsepower. Um, I've never had anything be able to start it. None of these inverters have been able to do it, but we'll give it a shot. So this is my five horsepower air compressor. I have the cord attached to an extension cord that we're gonna go in there and plug into the inverter. So to start this up, it is somewhere around like 105 to 110 amps. It has a huge surge. It's extremely hard to start. All right, I've got the meter set up and we are running about 2100 watts. Um, that may have an impact on if this starts. All right, here goes. Well, we overdid it. 109.0 amps. All right, the inverter's green again, it's reset. And to make this a completely fair test, I'm gonna turn the lights off. I'm gonna leave a couple little bitty lights on in here so we can see, but I'm gonna try to get this 2100 watts down as low as we can. Now with all the lights and everything off, we're only running 200 watts. So let's see if we can start the compressor now. It's still plugged in. I just got to turn the breaker on. Ha ah, I did it. <laughs> that is the first inverter that I've had start that five horsepower air compressor. That is awesome. Oh, I didn't have my meter on here to catch the amps. All right, we're gonna do it again so I can get the amps. Yes! 
He was able to do it that time. 104 amps. All right, we're gonna do this for a third time and see how it does. The, the compressor has 100 pounds of pressure already in it, so this is starting under a load. Yes! Did you notice that this turned yellow for a little bit when it had the surge, but it still was able to do it? So we surge tested it with it completely off grid. I wanna do one more test where we surge test it while it is on the grid. And I wanna, I wanna load this up with a lot of continuous loads and I wanna to try to start that compressor again. I wanna see how it reacts. Will it switch to the grid seamlessly and still start the compressor? Will it trip out? I don't know, let's find out. We know that the compressor wouldn't start with just the lights going. Let's see what happens when we got a heater going. So the inverter is already outputting about 6,800 watts, over 50% of the output. I'm gonna start the compressor, we'll see what happens. Of course I unplugged it, I gotta plug it back in. She started, but she's yellow, so it switched to the grid. I didn't see the lights blink. I think it switched pretty seamless. It makes 50 amps of 240 volts, but it passes through 100 amps of continuous power. So even if I hook this up to something and I accidentally oversurge it, it'll switch, switch to the grid seamlessly to get everything started. Here in about three minutes, this ought to switch back to batteries and then you'll be back to saving money on your power bill. I mean, that's, that just works perfectly. So even though it's an off-grid inverter, It'll, it'll try to use as much solar power as it can. And if there's a surge, it'll switch to the grid. If it's low on solar or batteries, it'll switch to the grid. And you can pretty much maximize your savings on solar with this without having to try to sell back to the power company or have a power company agreement. I just think this is a good option for people. So the 12,000 XP is the biggest inverter that I have tested so far. And it has definitely impressed me. It's the only one to start the five horsepower air compressor. And then the fact that it can start some of these big power tools while it's already outputting 80%, um, I think that's all impressive. It, it really did well today. And I've been running it out here for a couple weeks. It's worked flawlessly. But today, I think we really pushed it to the limits. And I think this is, I'm going to end up, this is going to go in my house. It's going to replace the 6,000 XP. And I wouldn't be surprised if I could run my whole house on this. Um, I run my house on 100 amps anyway, and this can pass through 100 amps. So more than likely, I could probably run the whole house with this without an issue. Um, we may end up trying that. But it'll still be out here for probably another month or two before I move it. So if there's any other tests you want me to do on this, um, just put that down in the comments down below. If it's a good test, if I have time, I'll, I'll try to do it. Or maybe it's a question I can answer. I'll try to answer it as best I can. But um, yeah, after today, I thought this was, was doing well. But after today, I'm definitely impressed with it. But I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.